The actor serves the story. The story serves the people. So when you look at acting as a service, it can actually elevate the work itself and leave you more fulfilled than when you look at it as something to gain personally. Welcome to In The Moment, an Anytown podcast. This is episode four. Thank you guys so much for listening, for subscribing, for all the great positive feedback I've received. I'm new to podcasting. This is all new to me. And um, the, the feedback I've gotten has been great. And so we're going to keep going. I'm excited to announce that coming up on future podcasts will be more more insights on acting, more stories and experiences of, of the acting experience, both from a career perspective and an artistic perspective. We're going to be bringing on more guests, people that have acted for a long time, people that are brand new, students of mine, actors that I've worked with over the years, friends of mine. We're going to hopefully be providing you guys with as much value and insight into the acting experience as possible. Always going to be framing things from a human perspective and an artistic perspective as it relates to your own personal journeys and every journey of every actor that comes on this show. We wanna combine and, and connect the experience of the actor and the artistic choices and how that affects and impacts the audiences out there, which is ultimately what we're doing. Today's episode is gonna be about serving story. This is gonna be an episode dedicated to service acting as a service and what does that look like and why do I look at it that way? Why should actors maybe look at it that way? And obviously to get your opinions too. So in the comments on YouTube, if you want to check out the video or even on Spotify, if you want to start a discussion or Apple Podcasts, anything at all, if you want to email actorslab at anytownpictures.com, you can obviously provide feedback wherever you want. Comment on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you would like. would love to engage you and to start a dialogue about your own acting experiences, your own insights, your own opinions about acting. But today we're gonna to talk about service. Um, I know I've talked a lot about my own story with, with acting and how it relates to decisions I've made, choices I've made, and uh, mistakes I've made. Um, but I, I wanna talk about service because this was a really big turning point in my acting journey, in my artistic life, but also in my acting career and why service is something that I think helps orient the actor in a proper place. I think all work, and acting obviously is work, whether it be artistic or technical or anything, is an opportunity to serve someone else. And I like this approach to acting because a lot of times when I was going through acting, I looked at it as self-service. Something that I was doing was self-seeking. And what was I seeking for myself? I was seeking a sense of validation. I I needed my ego padded or I needed validation that I was good enough or worthy of something. And it wasn't good for me. And I don't think it was good for my work. It honestly left me deficient in a lot of places in my work, which I can get into a little bit later. But more importantly, it, it left me destitute in my own spirit because I was constantly looking to fill something within me that was never enough. And that wasn't the proper thing to to fill inside me. You know, we all do this in life. We we look at external things and we try to possess them, right? Or we try to achieve them or we try to get that validation from others to feel more complete. The journey I personally went on with that was a journey of it's never enough. I will never have enough applause. I will never have enough validation. I will never have enough love and praise from the outside world to fill this void or this thing in me. And so it eventually ran out. That motor died and I was left kind of on the side of the road (laughs) asking questions, figuratively speaking, about why I have gotten to where I've gotten. And obviously I had to look at my own strategy for life as it related to acting and say, "What, what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? Once I focused on the problem, which was I had a, a spiritual, uh, which was I had a spiritual emptiness of some kind. Once I focused on that, then I could work on filling that with the proper thing spiritually, so that I could then be of 
use and of service to the world around me as an actor. When I went through my own process of, of awakening spiritually and I, I started to really work on these things within myself, acting became not that important to me, which I thought was always impossible because ever since I started acting at the age of 16, I didn't want to do anything else in a professional setting, but really I was obsessed with it and I was driven to achieve greatness as an actor. And so that's what I did. And it left me probably around the age of of 29, um, realizing that this isn't gonna work for me. Once I looked at life and said, okay, acting doesn't mean anything, I had to look at what did mean something to me. And at this, at this stage in my life, I had experienced service, helping people, being there for others, and trying to just be a better person. And that started to fulfill me in ways that I did not think were possible. Because again, I was so driven by success, trying to succeed in an industry that was impossible, trying to succeed in an industry that was competitive, and that so many people had said was, was not achievable this success that you're looking for in acting. We we all hear that. Acting is impossible. Making a living is impossible. It's so hard. You have to love it. Don't do it unless it's your passion. All these things. And honestly, it was very difficult. And it and it wasn't something that was was satiating that thing within me. So when I started to look at my fellow man and see how I could help them and how I could serve them just day to day as a friend, as a family member, what have you, I started to be more fulfilled. Slowly but surely acting became part of my life again and it started to reorient in a way where I actually felt useful as an actor the irony was I started to get better at acting when I looked at it as a service and that's what I'm hopefully leaving you guys with with this episode of of the podcast which is the actor serves the story the story serves the people so when you look at acting as a service it can actually elevate the work itself and leave you more fulfilled than when you look at it as something to gain personally. The irony is that not only you get better at acting when you think of it as a service in my experience, but honestly, acting becomes more fulfilling. There's a principle in acting that I follow and you guys have maybe heard me say that to get out of your head, you have to put your attention on the other person. And what I found is that's true in life as well. The more attention I put on other things, other people trying to help, trying to be of service, the more in the moment I am in my own life, the more healthy I am, the more acquainted with life in a healthy, right-sized way than if I was looking to gain something from life all the time and looking to achieve something and seek something for myself. I'm actually way less stressed out, way less anxious, and way more useful and way more of service when I do put my attention on someone else. This has manifested itself in a certain, this has made itself apparent in simply what I'm doing now, you know, making a podcast. I'm not really doing it for me. I'm trying to do it for you guys. Making a video, posting it on social media, not really doing it for myself, I'm doing it for you guys. Of course I enjoy it, of course there is inherent value for me, but that's not the primary motivator. The primary motivator is how can I actually serve you guys? And what's amazing is my career, my life, my artistic work, and my relationships have never been better as a result of this change in my mindset. So look at the script, look at the life around you and say how can I serve this thing that's outside of me? Ironically, it actually comes back, you know, how can you measure it? But I would say more than double in value, the value that you provide, you get in return. That's not why I do it, once again, because it can't be selfishly driven. Now, of course, we all have moments and we all are human beings and we make mistakes. And I'm not saying that your way of approaching acting is wrong. I'm just simply sharing my story and I'm hopefully helping you guys look at acting maybe as, as a, in a different way that will provide a lot more value in your collaborations and in your experiences. And if it doesn't work for you, that's totally fine. Um, Keep doing what you're doing that's working for you. I always say to my students when I'm training them, drop what doesn't work, keep what does. That that means some things that I teach you or that maybe I do as an actor, they're not gonna resonate, they're not gonna work for you. 
Drop what work doesn't work, keep what does work. Technique, as Meisner said, is a means to an end. Therefore, let the end, your end goal, maybe it's to be a natural actor, a truthful actor, a realistic actor, or be the best actor you can be. Whatever gets you closer to that goal, keep it. And whatever takes you further away from that goal, drop it, right? So if this idea of or philosophy of service as an actor is not something that resonates with you and it doesn't get you closer to your goal, of course, drop it. But maybe it can help you. And if it does, keep it. For me, it really helped me. It really changed my whole orientation and relationship with acting for the better. It put it in its rightful place, meaning I was no longer looking at life as something that owed me something but instead I was looking at what can I with the gifts I've been given as a person offer others in life and in their lives and it was this beautiful thing where I became humbled by this approach and I was put kind of in my rightful size in the world (laughs) because my ego was through the roof my expectations for what I, I deserved were immeasurable and therefore I was constantly disappointed by what was actually happening. And so it left me in this world of fantasy where I felt thwarted, I felt undervalued, and I felt rejected. And it it created a cycle of insanity for me because I was constantly redoubling my efforts with a bad strategy because the strategy was leaving me destitute spiritually. It was leaving me destitute in many, many ways. And I was was an unpredictable, not fun person to be around a lot of the time. And I didn't want to live that way. You know, of course, I didn't want to be that type of actor, but I also, more importantly, didn't want to be that type of person. And it took me doing a major inventory on what I was doing wrong, what was in my control, what were my choices, and what was I doing wrong that was leading to this. And once I did that, it was extremely humbling. It was hard to face those things. And I certainly wasn't doing this alone. I was being mentored and guided by people that had been through similar situations. And so it helped me, again, reorient myself with my own actions, my own choices. What can I actually control? And how can I look at this career and this art as way differently than I had been doing it? Because the strategy I had employed for myself was obviously leading me in a bad direction. So what are my choices What do I have control over? What's my side of the street? What are my responsibilities? Those became my focus. Instead of what was I owed? What did people think of me? Why didn't so-and-so hire me? Why, what is other, what do other people think of me? What do they think of my acting? And ultimately it was a a crisis of identity and self-esteem because I was constantly doing things that I wasn't proud of And so my self-esteem was low, my shame was high, and my strategy for coping with those negative emotions was poor because it was leading me into a cycle, right? I was cyclically looking at life as something that I deserved instead of what can I give that I've freely received. And so maybe that's something you guys can do as well. Do a little inventory on your actions And I always tell actors to get to know themselves, get to know themselves really, really well, right? Go on the journey of self-discovery. Some of you, maybe that's journaling. Maybe it's having really honest, deep conversations that are, that are really rigorously honest with those that you trust. Sometimes it's going for a walk. Uh, Sometimes it's listening to a podcast and realizing, oh, okay, I can kind of relate to this stuff. Or it's watching someone else be honest and and unconsciously realizing you can do the same. However, your self-discovery journey is going or whatever direction it moves in. Maybe this can be something that can help you analyze what maybe you're doing right or wrong and see how you can adjust along the way. Actors are so rejected all the time. It's a, it's a constant rejection. And I know I said this in the last episode of the podcast about feeling like your rejection and that which you experienced in being rejected became your identity. So I was a reject. You know, I was a defect. <laughs> I was a problem because that's all I was experiencing. Well, that's untrue, right? That's just a story that I've told myself and something that I've accepted as just who I am and what I'm what I'm all about. But it's not true. I started to do inventory on things that were actually beautiful that I had received and it actually made me feel extremely grateful. 
You know, you can start with a gratitude list. What are five things you're grateful for right now? And I challenge you, make that list right now. Pause the podcast and really think about it, whether you're driving in the car, you're on the train, you're walking around, or you're doing some sort of activity while you're listening to this. Pause the podcast and ask yourself, what are five things that I can be grateful for right now? Make this a daily practice if you haven't done so. It's really helpful. Again, it reorients you. Instead of looking at something as, I need to get this, I need to get to a certain place, the world owes me this. What you start to see is, what have I been freely given that I should be grateful for? And that's a really powerful adjustment that you can make, that you have control over. People's opinions, whether or not you get the job, uh, your success rate, your money, you know, all that stuff isn't necessarily in your control. Start to focus on the things that are. And this was one, looking at acting as a service. I now look at scripts, I look at projects, I look at filmmakers, I look at collaborators as how can I help you meet your goal or actualize your dream? So I produce independent films. I can help a, a, a writer write better or I can help a director cast something in a way that they want. I can connect them with a, a, an actor that I think is right. Or I can help them get fun, funding, financing for their film. Um, I can also write a, a film that better serves actors. You know, one of my favorite filmmakers, Paul Thomas Anderson said, one of my main jobs as, an, as, a, as a director is to write a great script. That's part of the best direction I can give. Best decisions I can make as a director is to write a great script. If, he, if you're a writer, you know, some directors aren't writers, but he is. You know, that's serving the actor. The actor serves the story. We all serve the story and the story serves the audience member. It serves the people. And so I look at it as how can I help you? How can I really, really help you? I look at that in the same way with my scene partners, any actors that I get to work with. I say, how can I help you? You know, we had this really awesome experience. I got to work with the great Barry Corbin not too long ago, Texas acting legend. He was in Lonesome Dove and No Country for Old Men and so many projects. He's been in everything. I used to watch The Closer with my mom all the time on uh, TNT and he was Kira Sedgwick, you know, and uh, her character's uh, dad. And uh, now he's playing my buddy's dad in uh, a Fox show. So anyway, I got to work with him. He was fantastic to work with. He's just a great guy. And I also got to work with a, an actor who had never acted but one time. And he was my buddy's uncle. And we were all in the scene together. And it was beautiful because I got to be in the rehearsal with them. We had this really amazing moment when we were in the rehearsal. You know, I'm always trying to think of how can I help the director, you know, see this project and, and make it a reality through the work that we do together. And we were in the rehearsal, you know, I'm trying to serve the story, serve the director. And um, the director set up a great space for us to just, just safely communicate how we're feeling and where we're at. Barry Corbin, obviously, is a legend, so he's, he's acted in a million things. So he already kind of has his ideas. But we had Kevin, who was there acting, and he's never acted before. So it was really cool that Kevin said something that I, I thought was really profound. He said, I'm really scared. And, you know, he's a grown man and he, he's on a ranch and he's always dealing with, you know, he's dealt with so many things in life that are so difficult, but he said, I'm scared. And you don't expect a grown man like that to say that about acting. But if we're all honest, acting can be very scary. And if you're doing something like acting, especially for the first time, it's extremely terrifying. And he said, I'll be honest, I'm scared. And uh, our director, Jim, said, Barry, have you ever been scared? And he said, of course. Adam, have you ever been scared? I said, yeah, of course. And it really eased Kevin's mind to know that all of us who had been actors before in many, many projects had said, yeah, yeah, we're scared too, man. Like we, we all have fears. We all have anxieties. We all have insecurities. But what, what Kevin did by being so honest was he opened up this vulnerability, right? And that's, that's beautiful because being vulnerable opens you up to being not impervious to the moment, right? To be affected by the moment that you're living in, within the take, within the acting, within the scene. And that's really what we're all about. We're here to discover the moments together. And every moment, as Meisner said, has a meaning all its own. So let's just be in the moment. I looked at that moment as how can I serve Kevin? You know, so I started to think, how can I make Kevin feel at ease? And Kevin, you know, he's, he's never really done this. So he said, 
I'm just nervous about these lines, you know, which is a common worry. And me and Barry were able to tell him, you know, that we're going to be shooting this in pieces. You know, the scene is split up into setups, shot setups, you know, put the camera here, we move it here, we move it here. And then those uh, setups are split up into different takes. And it really eased his mind because he thought he would have to memorize this thing like a play, the whole scene. And I said, well, you know, you can, and, and most actors do, but don't worry about it. You don't have to do that. We're gonna split it up so we can have the script supervisor there. We can help you with the lines in between. But I said, you know, just, you know, be in the moment. And, and of course our director, Jim, just helped him so much. And um, he was he was very, very helpful. But I looked at it as how can I help Kevin too, and so did Barry. And that scene just ended up being so fun. And we were worried, but I think Kevin walked away thinking, wow, I did a great job. And I feel really confident in what I was able to do. And that meant more to me than anything, you know, that, that another actor felt really uh, supported. And so again, always trying to look at acting as a service whether I'm serving my fellow scene partner in the moment by being real with them, by being connected to them, by being truthful and honest and in response to them in front of the camera, or even if it's off camera when they're in front of the camera, or even if it's behind the scenes when they say, I'm really scared. Being there to support them and, and to give them that that trust, um, which hopefully will become the the leading quality over fear. You know, always look at the script and say, how can I really, really bring this to life? And as Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, led by example, and he said, you know, elevate the project that you're in, you know, elevate the project that you're in. Look at every project he did. That's what he did every time. That's been my goal, too. I want to elevate the projects that I'm in. I want to help the directors and the writers and everybody involved in the film to be more proud of it um, if I if I was involved, you know, proud that wow, we really came together and really did our best. And, you know, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. So hopefully I'm bringing my A game. You know, having excellence as a standard is is not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing. And it can really serve others when you do your best to dedicate your time and and spend that that extra hour, that last turn of the screw, doing the best job you possibly can as an actor because it really does elevate the story the movie and it does serve the script and I think it does ultimately serve the audience and that's what it's all about how can I better serve the audience because I am a storyteller whether I'm writing directing producing acting or in any capacity if I'm teaching an actor hopefully I'm helping equip them with tools and principles that they can actually utilize that helps them access their talent be in the moment and become truthful actors because ultimately when they work they're going to be elevating the stories they're in because of their abilities. That's what it's all about. So it's a pretty simple message with today's podcast. I hope that it really uh, helps you because I think in, in this industry, in Hollywood, in anything, man, it can be really, really tempting to just see what can I get out of this? You know, the hustle mentality and the, you know, achievement mentality and, how much is 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 too much money? One more dollar. How mu- and how much is enough money? One more dollar. That type of mentality, it'll leave you burnt out. In my experience, it'll it'll not lead to fulfillment. It will not lead to spiritual wellness. It will not lead to a life of service and helping others. It'll lead to, uh, in my case, just an ego maniacal, never ending cycle of spiritual destitution that's really what it led led me to but now it's restored a balance in my life that i really needed and i never thought possible and when acting as a passion kind of left me for that temporary time i had to just accept the fact that maybe i wouldn't act again and maybe i wouldn't want to be around acting and storytelling and movies and stuff and that's, that's that's okay there's nothing wrong with that um but then God kind of reintroduced it into my life and I found like, oh man, I do love acting. It's just new. It was a new way of approaching the work. And again, the irony was I was never in a better spot to serve that work, <laughs> to be a better actor than when that real problem had been solved. And it was something that I was super grateful for. It took me shifting my perspective, but a power greater than myself, God, did for me what I couldn't do for myself. And the power to serve others didn't originate in me. 
And I could really see that being true time and time again. And I see that now every single day. Wake up in the morning, don't feel great, you know, maybe and and I, you know, down on myself and I don't I don't feel, you know, capable or like I'm doing enough. You know, the mentality can come back. But you have to take the contrary action to that mentality. And the days I take the contrary action to that feeling are the days when things go way better. You know, you know, answer the comment, send the, send the reply, reach back out, make the video, teach the actor, you know, get get in the meeting, write write a scene, help a filmmaker, connect people, whatever it is that I'm to do that day. I always feel so much better afterwards. And it's another it's another principle of acting that's true also in life, which is the foundation of acting is the reality of doing. It's not the reality of feeling. However, if you just simply do a thing with reality, the feeling you wish you had as an actor will follow the action. It's true in life. If I wake up unmotivated, but I just do the action anyway, even though I'm feeling like I don't want to do it, but just do it anyway. The motivation comes, the inspiration comes every time I just sit down and take the action. So sit down and take the action. Sit down and serve the story, serve someone else, help someone else. Part of my kind of prayer ritual that became a practice that I sometimes forget, (laughs) unfortunately, but every time I do it is really helpful is if I wake up feeling anxious or less than or incapable or fearful, I might do an inventory on those feelings and then say, God, who is someone in my life that I can connect to that may be feeling the same way and give me the courage to reach out to them. And that has been so, so helpful when I've done that. I do not do that all the time, unfortunately. But when I do, things go better. And usually the feeling that I wish I had, self-esteem, confidence, being encouraged, motivated, inspired, those follow after I've reached out, after I've taken the action. So it's just like acting. Do what you're there to do and the real authentic feeling will follow. Don't wait to be motivated. Don't wait to be inspired to take the action because that that won't happen. And obviously your productivity and your, your progress and your impact will be diluted because you've been waiting to feel the emotion. Don't wait, do. I hope this episode has been insightful, enlightening, relatable. Stay tuned for the next episodes. We're gonna have more guests introduced. We're going to be diving into stories. We're going to be going back and forth about what it's like to be an actor, what it's like to be a student, what it's like to make mistakes in this career, in this art form. And uh, hopefully it will be continually providing you guys with more value in your journey as actors. Of course, always reach out if you'd like to uh, ask a question. You can obviously comment on this video on YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever. You can send an email to actorslab at anytownpictures.com. If you've been wanting to study with me one-on-one and I have room, I would love to do a free 30-minute consultation with you out there. Obviously, we have links. We have courses you can download. We have all types of stuff. Don't be shy. Reach out. Follow us on TikTok. Subscribe to our YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. We're always posting stuff. We're always trying to help you guys out there become the best actors you can be. And thank you guys so much for listening and following along. I hope this has helped. Hey, Merry Christmas. Uh, it's, It's a wonderful time of year. And I hope that you guys are spending time with loved ones and um, you can you can find people out there to serve and to help uh, during this time. And I'm wishing you guys all the best. Thank you so much for following along, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.